This is Caitlin Blackwood. I played Young Amelia Pond on Doctor Who. And you're listening to the Five Ish Fangirls Podcast. The tensions this week continue all the way to episode 203 again of the Five Ish Fangirls Podcast. Now with even more Sheffield Steel. <laughs> Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five Ish Fangirls Podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like we do over if we're on the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hi everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> At least I, for I, us it's again. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I guess Tim Shaw didn't like what we had to say about him uh, or, was, or, or the yeah. bundle yeah. of electronic yeah, so. wires. They just kind of... <laughs> yeah. So, disclaimer up front to all our <laughs> listeners. So like, what are they talking about? We recorded last night. Mm-hmm. And it was a great recording. We had lots yes. of amazing things to say about Doctor Who. I go to edit it and the audio is just crap. <laughs> worse than our other worse than last time this audio. was this was not salvageable so then chauncey and i proceeded to spend the next like three three and a half hours we were up to almost 1 a.m playing in audacity playing in skype playing with different configurations on my computer <laughs> trying to figure out something so that we would not have this issue again and we think we found something so fingers crossed if if we sound good and possibly better than we ever have in the past then yay until skype decides to update something and then we'll probably be back at square one Mm -hmm. thank you microsoft yeah so and on top of it all chrissy can't join us (laughs) because she because she because she has the baby and mm-hmm. and he's a a bit more uh, active now that he's older as opposed to you know when he was just a baby <laughs> an actual mm-hmm. baby and just slept all the time so so we're going to try this again and hopefully uh, hopefully it'll be halfway decent so bear with us mm-hmm. listeners <laughs> so all right. First things first, we'll get to the news. A uh, mm-hmm. couple of trailers. Most of the news is TV related, so and mostly from yeah. streaming services, actually, too. Like nothing for regular TV. Um, so uh, we got a trailer for the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, yep. which looks very dark, but mm-hmm. kind of funny, yeah. kind well, of like, interesting. I'm kind of interested. I think she was like, like oh, I, I, I grew up with your, the original one. I was like, uh-huh. and I loved it. And this one, I was a bit iffy when I first heard about it. I was supposed to be like a based off the same world as the Riverdale one. Uh, and yeah. I don't really, what I saw of that, I don't really like it. But this one actually, like, I'm somewhat intrigued. So I might try it. And plus Michelle Gomez. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That, that's it's, definitely up there for reasons why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, it, if for anything else, I want to see what Michelle Gomez does. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. See how much of Missy carries over to her character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So... We'll give it a shot. It's on Netflix, so you yeah. know it's not like you're committing, you know, time. You could be watching something else because you can watch it whenever. So mm-hmm. that's the nice thing about it. So, um, and then the other trailer that dropped that I'm so excited <laughs> about. <laughs> Still no release date, but we at least have a trailer. Is for Good Omens. Yes. So. Hello, David Tennant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Soon to be everybody's favorite demon. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, uh, the same name of a certain other demon from a certain other TV show. Two separate yeah. two characters entirely separate, but almost on the same level. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, they 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 do they they both dress pretty well. Yes, um, yes. Both pretty dapper. <laughs> both pretty dapper. Uh, hang around with the, some interesting characters. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but no, this this looks really good. I'm excited. I'm, I'm just excited to see how it gets adapted into, mm-hmm. you know, a, a series. So, and for those of you who haven't read the book yet, you've got do to it. It. do it. It is so worth it. I'm sure there's an audio book. It's book-book. so now, funny. Somewhere. Yes. I admit, I haven't read it. Yet. Like oh, it's oh. been on Crash the list. and Gaiman together. Like, I, oh, I don't know why. I'm excited. I love Terry Pratchett. I love Neil Gaiman, but I don't know why I haven't read this one. Yet. Like it makes no sense to me. It, 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 it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a because it's set in England, so it's very British. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so man. like. Well, Wait, yeah, I know. Well, when they start talking about like geography, you know, like the interstate system and and places on the map, it's like I don't know where any of this is, but okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I- I'm along for the ride. I'll go with yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just you just kind of go along with it. Like I mm-hmm. don't know where this village is, but I'll take your word for it. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Um. And that's going to be on Amazon. Mm-hmm. We did determine that. So, yeah. and then also coming to Amazon at some point, yeah, further down the line probably, um, is they are going to be doing a series based on the Wheel of Time fantasy books. So, which I have not read. Mm-mm. So, and apparently the the um, the. Uh, website that we have linked with the release, the uh, synopsis <laughs> is fairly uh, 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 very, very stripped down. <laughs> according mm-hmm. to Chris, according to yeah. Chrissy, it's like mm-hmm. it's like that's just the bare minimum of what the series is about. <laughs> so, but there's there's witches and mm-hmm. strange worlds and. Mm-hmm. And not just female witches. There are male witches too. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So there is that. And then jumping back to Netflix. Netflix is going to develop a series based on the Chronicles of Narnia. Yay! That's what I have. Looks we'll like good. bread. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me too. It's been a very long time, but yes. And it'll be interesting to see their take based uh, and versus the two movies that Disney put out. <laughs> somebody put out all yeah, those years ago. Out. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't do too well. Nope. <laughs> so. Uh, I only ever saw the first one. I don't think I ever saw the second one. Oh. I think I might have caught part of the second one, but mm, yeah, I, I think don't remember I, it too much. Yeah. <laughs> I know I saw the first one in theaters. The second one, I think I probably like caught it on Disney Channel or something. Probably, probably. So, I I wonder I wonder if Netflix uh, picking up the Chronicles of Narnia is. I mean, that's a you got a lot to work with there, but it, it's kind yeah. of funny considering you've got Netflix doing this and then it's Amazon Prime that's going to do the Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's so, right. which C.S. Lewis and, and Tolkien were friends. So, mm-hmm. they even <laughs> have <laughs> characters, like, there are two characters in each, well, a character in each book mm-hmm. series that yeah. is the character. Is yeah, you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it makes me wonder. Okay, we've got Chronicles of Narnia, we've got Lord of the Rings. Maybe halfway down the pipeline, maybe something with J.K. Rowling in a certain wizarding school, mm, or maybe. American base. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. That would be nice. Possibility yeah. yeah, like I was. I don't. I don't think. I don't think the Potter films are quite old enough yet to be doing any sort of remakes. But, right, but I'm just... I would. I wouldn't be opposed to a series of like, yeah, like the 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 other schools, 
Yeah. You know, find, you know, go back to Durham Strong. Mm-hmm. You know. I know a lot of people want, um, like. Or the U.S. Yeah. Or the early Marauder days. <laughs> yeah, I yes. know a lot of people want that. A lot of people want, um, the gang's kids. They want those stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I even see someone, like, uh, a lot of people want, like, the founders, like, a story about the founders. Mm-hmm. That would be cool, Hogwarts. too. I, that would yeah. be really awesome. Like, that would be cool, too. So, I would be down for any of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Please, JK. I want some mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> like, we still have but a few Fantastic Beasts, but, like, we, like, we want more. Yes. Mm-hmm. What can we say? We're 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 nerds. We want stuff. <laughs> we're demanding. <laughs> in, in, in our TARDIS, that is our fandom. We we want to expand a little bit more. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like it's bigger on the inside. There's room for more. more. Yes. yes. I got some space we, over here next to the pool. Yeah. <sighs> we don't have to jettison anything quite yet. Nope. <laughs> The zero room is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have to put the library in the pool quite yet. <laughs> so, um, and then moving over to Disney's uh, streaming service, uh, we've got more information about John Favreau's series that he's going to be doing. Um, it's officially titled The Mandalorian. Um, and on StarWars.com, they've released the first photo because um, now the series is now in produ- production. Um, it's going to focus on one of the warriors from the same planet and culture of Jango Fett. Mm. So it's going to be set after the fall of the Empire and before the emergence of the First Order. Mm. So and there's uh there's a there's a there's a few uh, recognizable names that are going to be directing some of these episodes yes. um, including uh dave filoni who has d- worked on star wars rebels and the clone wars he's mm-hmm. going to be directing the first episode of the series and then uh a, a gentleman that we may know just a, a little by the mm-hmm. name of taika watiti yes is going to be directing an episode as well. And then Bryce Dallas Howard, yes. star of the Jurassic World franchise and daughter of Ron Howard, director of Solo, a Star Wars story, is going to be uh, directing an episode as well. Cool. Has she directed before? Or is this her first time, do you know? I you have can... no idea. Hmm. It's kind of like you hear that like a lot nowadays, it's like actors that direct at the same. It's kind of cool, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that is exciting. So Favreau's got his uh, got him got his got himself busy. Yeah. She's directed seven other things or six other things besides Ma- the Mandalorian. Ooh, Soulmates, something for Vanity Fair. Call Me Crazy, a five film, a short When You Find Me, and then a short called Orchids. So she has done some directing. No. Ah. Mm-hmm. Runs in the family. Yep. Oh. All right. Well, that is it for the fandom news. I've got a couple of things to talk about before we jump in to Doctor Who. Um, so, um, I will put a link to my video, but I did go to a media preview at the Indianapolis Children's Museum, uh, last week for their, this year's haunted house. They do a uh, haunted house at the museum every year. It's a different theme every year. Um, it's one of the longest running, like, children's haunted houses in, like, the state, I think. It's, they've been doing it for a long, long 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 time um but this year's theme is grimnasium so it's zombie basketball players and zombie football players and a zombie marching band and a nasty torium with a monster in the swimming pool um so 
Nasty. <laughs> yeah, instead of a natatorium, it's a nasty torium. <laughs> um, so, um, but uh, that was, uh, that's always fun. I've done uh, their previews for their haunted houses a, a few other times. It's, it's nice because I'm not a huge haunted house fan <laughs> at all. Uh, the Children's Museum is about as scary as I could tolerate. <laughs> Unlike Chauncey was like, yeah, let's go to the haunted house where it's, you know, you know, like the walking dead in real life, actual zombies. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, no, I want to go with the little kids <laughs> and have them hold my hand. Cause I'll be scared. Uh, so thankfully the media preview is just that it's during the day with the lights on, no music, no sound effects, no actors jumping out, scaring the bejesus out of you, which even once I go back and when it's actually active and I've been through it, I know where the hiding spots are. I'm still going to get scared. So, <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it's uh, always fun to go and see what they come up with um, for the theme and putting stuff together. It's, it's homegrown as long as, even as long as they've been doing it, it still has that, homemade feel to it you know stuff made out of paper mache and props from previous haunted houses that they've either repainted or done something to them um so they can reuse them um so um if anyone uh is in the indianapolis area or will be in the indianapolis area between now and halloween um, you can go to the Children's Museum Haunted House. It's a separate ticket, so you do not need museum admission. Um, they do two. The, the schedule's split, so during the day, it's lights on. Um, so it's more like trick-or-treating. So you can take your little ones, um, and they'll give them stickers and, you know, those little plastic spider rings and stuff like that um, so that they can they can go through without... Hopefully not being too scared. <laughs> I would prefer to go through with the lights on. But <laughs> for the braver folks, um, they they do your what you'd expect from a haunted house with the lights off and fog and lights and all, the, all that stuff. Um, you just need to go to the website and check the hours, the operating hours for whether you want lights on or lights off. Um, and then the other exhibit I checked out was um, their new science of Ripley's, like Ripley's Believe It or Not, um, which is um, a lot of uh, the things you would see if you have ever been to a Ripley's, which there are, it seems like a bajillion of them in the, just in the United States. Um, uh, it, but more educational. So you still have things like a two-headed calf but it's a two-headed calf plus a an example of what the skeleton looks like, um, plus information on how you end up with these animals with multiple heads or multiple legs or you know that sort of things. Like how does it work genetically? That sort of thing. Or here's a rock from space. Let's compare how heavy it is, you know, compared to a rock you'd find in Indiana. That sort of thing. So. Um, there's a lot of um, stuff that I recognize from things that are staples at most Ripley's. And then there are some things that I've never seen before, which was pretty cool. So, um, But I've got video from both of those. It's just one long video. It's all one video. But I have video from both exhibits. So I will link to that in the show notes so you can watch it. Uh, that way you can at least see an idea of what the haunted houses like with the lights on so you can either preview it before you go or if you can't go at all you can live vicariously through me i guess so <laughs> um and then the other thing was over the weekend i was in chicago at the women in podcasting festival uh that was put together by rob and martha southgate from southgate media group um which was pretty amazing. Um, there was a, a good number of podcasters there. Um, every podcast that was represented um, had to have um, 
uh, at least one person hosting the podcast that identified as a woman. There were a couple of podcasts where um, they had a man, uh, you know, as a co-host, but they they still counted because there were still women. Um, the man just all along for the ride, uh, <laughs> I guess. Um, but uh, it was it was great because they gave us they um, we had twenty five minute slots and they let us really just talk about whatever so they could do you know their actual uh you know shortened version of their their podcast a lot of them that's what they did some of them they just kind of talked to the audience and their experience with podcasting and that sort of thing um because of the impeccable timing of uh this event and the bbc i talked about doctor who because <laughs> 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 uh, the event happened to be the day before doctor who was coming back so um, I talked about uh, my history with getting into Doctor Who and uh, what Doctor Who means to me and what I think it re- represents. Um, if you want to see me talk, um, you can go to the Facebook page and I believe you can see the live feed. Um, I have actually not watched it, so I don't know how good the audio is from the live feed because they were just using a cell phone streaming on Facebook. Um, but I do now have the audio from my part. They, they did send it, so um, I will edit that together and it will go up as a separate uh, you know, thing. A little extra squee, as we like to call it, um, in the podcast feed. So Yay. if you downloaded this, odds are you'll that you know check the check your iTunes or whatever it is you're using for that as well. So it'll be a nice little little bonus for you. So um, I listened to the entire thing and I was like, hey, I don't sound too bad <laughs> 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 for being by myself. I had the Duff door with me, but he doesn't say a thing. So what are you gonna do? <clears throat> I had to do all of the talking. He, he just sits there. A strong, silent type. He, he just sits there and looks cute and cuddly and handsome and makes me do all the talking. So, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. The uh, event, I think, is a, a great um, idea. Um, when I uh, when I was at the Indie Disney meet and I was talking to Lou actually, and I said something about you know we were talking about his podcast and we're talking about our, you know, five ish bear girls and stuff. And he's like, you know, it's great what you're doing. He's like, he said something like, like only 16% of podcasts and like iTunes or whatever, um, have a female host. Wow. So yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So podcasting is a very male dominated medium. So um, even just, you know, this single event, which was only, you know, six hours long to give a focus to women who host podcasts is, you know, an amazing thing and definitely a step in the right direction. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. It's great for the medium and it's great for the community. So, um, and Rob's already got plans to do another one, um, in early 2020, because this event came together in such short notice from the time they get the idea to the time it happened, I was only like three months. Um, so for the next, next big one, he wants to have time to, to uh, really do, you know, a lot of marketing and get sponsors and, you know, probably a bigger venue um, and that sort of thing. So they're going to give themselves plenty of time to do another big one like this but there may be smaller like pop-up not necessarily pop-ups you all know in advance but that sort of thing smaller um type events like this at like maybe a coffee shop or another small theater or uh, a university campus or that sort of thing so you know obviously <clears throat> if something gets arranged um, I'll hear about it from Rob and we'll make sure to share it so that, you know, people know when and where stuff is taking place so they can try to attend. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Even, even if it meant having to go to Chicago <laughs> 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 on, a, on a Saturday 
thankfully the Cubs lost their wild card game the night before. So they, mm-hmm. they're because, because the venue was literally down the street from Wrigley field. Like, oh, wow. a, like a half a mile down the street from Wrigley field. We ended up going to dinner afterwards and the place where we went to eat was right across the street from Wrigley field. <laughs> so, <laughs> They're like, yeah, if the Cubs have been playing, you would have not been able to get a parking space. And like, well, it's a good thing the Cubs lost. Sorry to all mm. the Cubs fans out there, but mm. uh, <laughs> worked in my favor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so sorry. Anyway, uh, mate, there's always next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, my mother and mother-in-law are going, yeah, there's always next year. So mm-hmm. they're they're big they're big Cubs fans. We, we we finished dinner. We ended up walking to the end of the block so that we could take our picture in front of the 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 sign, the iconic sign, mm-hmm. the the red and white ne- like you know neon sign, you know home of the Cubs, and took a picture and sent it to our mothers and like hi from Wrigley Field. They're like oh, so <laughs> so. But that was fun. And like I said, stay tuned to your podcast feed for the audio from that. So, and I, I think they may be releasing the audio from everything, the Southgate Media Group, but you'd have to, I don't know if they're going to do it in individual or if they're going to do it all in one big one. I would recommend either going to their website or probably their Facebook page for announcements on that or you can go rewatch the the facebook live feed if you really want to catch everybody else's um talks so there is that so that is it for news and housekeeping since chrissy is not here so chrissy had does have a game review that she did do yesterday that obviously we lost um Mm -hmm. (laughs) but she is going to um try and type it up as a blog post on our website uh, Mm -hmm. with pictures and stuff so which that may actually be good because then she can Mm -hmm. put pictures when when she's talking about the game so people got to have a better idea of what it is she's talking about when she's talking about Mm -hmm. the game pieces and all that so Mm -hmm. As once that gets posted, we will share the link to that as well. So, all right, moving on. It's time to uh, turn on the uh, spoiler alarm. Yep. Just Please in case. pause if you haven't, <laughs> yes. and then come back. We will be waiting for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we are going to be talking about Doctor Who, season eleven, episode one, "The Woman Who Fell to Earth," and she did. <laughs> oh, did she yes. ever? She did. So, oh my. Mm-hmm. So, um, I've seen the episode twice. I really kind of want to watch it again, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yep. It's like my first impression. First, the first time I watched it, I was in the car. <laughs> Sean was driving. I was watching it on my laptop with my earbuds in. So, you know, even with the sound turn all the way up, it's like you still had road noise and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there were some things I missed um, the first time. So then I got to watch it again with better sound um, and less noise around me. And, yeah, there were definitely some things I missed, like comments and and that sort of thing. Um, But first impression... Um, even the second time around, really good. Felt mm-hmm. like Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Um, did not uh, did not disappoint me for you know a season premiere, um, and um, did not disappoint me as far as first impressions for Jodie's Doctor. Mm-mm. So. The only nitpick I have is with the quote-unquote simulcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, four or five minutes and a whole bunch of commercials. And then sometimes little mini clippets of, oh, stick around. Here's what's coming next. It's like, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm glad I missed that. 
Oh, I had to go to my I had to go to my niece's birthday party while during the simulcast. I was like, oh, I'm gonna miss it, but apparently, I <laughs> other than just you know being able to watch at the same time as everybody else, I did not miss out on a uh, I, I missed out on a somewhat unpleasant experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yep. Um, yeah, it's like don't call it a simulcast if there's gonna be. You know, commercials. Right. So, like, I don't, I don't remember. There, there were commercials during the simulcast of Day of the Doctor. I wouldn't think so because it, the simulcast no. was also in the theaters too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So, like there, there may no have been way. like a short intermission, I think, maybe, right? Yeah, at most. Um, but can does anyone remember if the because they simulcast the announcement of Peter Capaldi as the doctor, didn't they? Yeah, they yes. did. And that had, that had commercials, didn't it? Uh, I don't no, remember. If I vaguely, it, there might have been like one or two, but I vaguely remember if they broke away or had to, all it was was a picture of all 11 doctors up to that point mm-hmm. you know doctor who reveal will return or coming soon and it was just you know yeah. and then the, a, the, a music theme of some sort was on the but I can't remember if it was the doctor who theme or some generic and then when they did come it was okay hi <laughs> let's okay. roll <laughs> let's say that was so long ago I can't, yeah. like, I, don't yeah. remember. My, I don't remember my fuzzy memory from being on vacation and it being yeah. rainy and <laughs> praying that the signal wouldn't cut out <laughs> yeah it's like you know how long ago that was I was like five years ago I know oh man it's that six years ago it? something like that man yeah. time flies when you're having fun yeah <laughs> Time flies when you got all the time and space at your fingertips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, the, the, the whole simulcast thing is kind of kind of messed up. So, mm-hmm. yeah. only the so like they like, hey, it's gonna be on all your the normal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, d- I don't know what the logic was for them trying to do. Because, I mean, there wasn't necessarily anything like like any sort of big reveal or anything in yeah. the first first episode. So it's, it's not like Day of the Doctor where, you know, like, at that, although at that point it was it was a really bad <laughs> bad secret, but you know, like Tom Baker's surprise appearance, you know, mm-hmm, you, w- mm-hmm. you wouldn't want to spoil people on that. No. But um, but I mean, as far as the plot of this, other than them killing <laughs> a character mm-hmm. <laughs> right off the bat, um, yeah, there's not anything like uber revelatory. Um, as far as the story is concerned, so yeah, like, so I don't. Probably I don't just know the whole logic is there. Excitement of it being back and all the new stuff. Yeah, I, my guess. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, that I that I can understand. I mean, I was excited. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me too. I was I was excited and kind of in. I don't know, shock, denial. I think it'd just been so long since we'd had Doctor Who mm-hmm. that it finally got to this point where it's like, oh, Doctor Who's back. And I'm like, is it really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, is it really back? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or are they just I'm, messing with us? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I did get, you know, a little Torchwood vibe here and there, but nothing, you know, nothing too overpowering. yeah. Just yeah, from, you I know, mean, Chibnall's it, run. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was it was a bit dark. Mm-hmm. Um, the the you know our our protagonist Tim Shaw. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. he went. He kudos to the makeup department. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Because he was he, really gross. <laughs> yeah, because when he revealed, I was like, 
What are those white bumpy things? Oh, yeah, their teeth. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, it's like we his... we we get trophies from our conquests and like yeah, that's gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then his his armor kind of looked like a cross between Cyberman slash Ice Warrior meets a stolen tech spec from a Tony Stark Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Man suit. Yeah. yeah. He, he he did look he did look I for a second there when he was just kneeling on the ground after his pod cracks open. Mm-hmm. I'm like like C- Cyberman? Like they said <laughs> we they said we weren't getting any three mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Yes. Like is this a Cyberman kind of, offshoot? Because I was kind of doing the head tilt that my two dogs do when they're just yeah. like, huh? What? Yeah. What? <laughs> what, what? What'd you say? Yeah. Like, what's this? I'm confused. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and the, and the fact that, you know, the pod was, was cold mm-hmm. to the touch, I'm like, uh, I swear. <laughs> yeah. Well, well and, and blue to boot, because I'm thinking, TARDIS? Yeah, regenerating. I I, I thought Ooh. yeah, that's what I kind of thought. I thought maybe it was the TARDIS, and she was gonna have to regrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like yeah. maybe the TARDIS exploded one too many times there after her regeneration. She's finally gonna have to regrow herself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That blue little Hershey kiss of a blob. No, there was nothing nice in that center. No. <laughs> no. It, was, it was bad at the center of this Tootsie Pop. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Bad, bad, bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Um, and uh, b- besides the weirdness with the simulcast, no uh, opening title sequence. Nope. So we yeah. haven't gotten that yet. Which Brittany has a good theory about that. Yes. Yep. If, even a day later, I still kind of like it. So. Yeah, but, <laughs> want me to say the theory now? Yes, yes please do. It. <laughs> <laughs> like my theory is because the TARDIS hasn't showed up yet, so. Mm-hmm. So they don't want to like show us the TARDIS about us seeing it in the show, or maybe. The, like I don't know if like if the opening is gonna be any different. How, too different than what it normally is, and like it normally seems like it's going through the vortex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So maybe because the TARDIS. I don't. Yeah. I, no, I, I think you got a valid point there because every single season we have the TARDIS going through the vortex. So yeah, I I hey I agree with your theory there, Britt. Yeah. Maybe, maybe like you know how you were saying like it, originally you thought that thing was TARDIS had to grow up. Maybe TARDIS is like out of commission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why it's why it's so just, and, and just, having an open title sequence where the TARDIS is flying through the vortex wouldn't technically be correct because the TARDIS ooh. is not. Yeah. And another theory just hit me. Okay. That funky chameleon circuit. Mm-hmm. Maybe this explosion knocked it back into commission. Ooh, and maybe. it's hiding somewhere, and we don't know what it looks like. Exactly, that could be. <laughs> so, <laughs> with with Brittany's, <laughs> we might have something. Yeah, I don't know. we might have something. <laughs> Dear BBC. <laughs> How close are we? How close are we? And if not, here's an idea for next season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although, really, the, the, the TARDIS needs to stop blowing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, it's... Well, well, and the Doctor needs to find a better place to regenerate. Yeah. Thank you, Honest Trailers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if well, you haven't it, checked uh, those out yet, Yes. Please do. There's your plug. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, I mean, the, 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 if if you look at at least New Who mm-hmm. and the 
uh, the, all the doctor's regenerations and what happens post regeneration. Um, what happens to the TARDIS seems to equal to how resistant he was to regenerating. Mm-hmm. So, like, Eccleston's doctor, he's like, oh, I'm regenerating. Here I go. Mm-hmm. You know, one last, you know, comment. You know, you were fantastic. Yes, and so it, was I. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And boom, he regenerates. And, every, you know, the, he, the doctor's not fine, but the Turgis is fine. Right. Every regeneration after that, he has held and tried to delay regenerating. And yeah. what happens? Uh-huh. The, the TARDIS goes berserk. <laughs> so Very good point. The, in some I, form or fashion. I mean, yeah, it, the, for Capaldi, it didn't, she didn't explode, but mm-hmm. she did crash and get swallowed by a dinosaur. Uh-huh. Yep. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know. Yep. And Matt Smith almost crashed in the Big Ben. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so, oh. Yeah. So, next, you know, whenever Jody decides to leave, mm-hmm. whenever the Doctor regenerates again, let's maybe just, you know, take it and, you know, be brave, <laughs> take mm-hmm. it on the chin, and uh, yep. just go with it. <laughs> yep. We'll land in a beach somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that works too. <laughs> Go lay in a snowbank. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or something. Because oh. <laughs> oh. the TARDIS really would probably appreciate not exploding every time you regenerate. Yeah. I mean, uh, the TARDIS is a little bit opinionated as it is to begin that, with. But... That, well, that, that and, you know, all the times that uh, she she exploded in that loop with a river. Uh, oh, yeah. True. So. Yeah, and then, then they phasing in and out with mm-hmm. Clara and the doctor, yeah. Maybe yep. she's having a little soul in hiding. Probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the TARDIS needs a little me time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she's like, if you need me, I'll be at a, I'll be at the spa. Yeah. <laughs> Separate vacations. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're gonna go vacation on Earth. I'm gonna vacation over here. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Excuse me. No. Um, so yeah, no. We take it an opening title sequence. We do get a hint of what the the theme is going to sound like, though. Um, just with the incidental music. Um, just the music in general, I really liked. Yes. Same. Yeah. No. Was, uh, they picked a good person to fill in for Marie Gold. <laughs> Yes. Yep. yep. So, I don't have any complaints there. So, honestly, I don't really have any complaints with it at all. Mm-hmm. No, any, any complaints I have are nitpicky. Mm-hmm. Really, you know, some some story things where it's like, what, what are you doing? That doesn't necessarily make sense. But, mm-hmm. you know, we don't we don't necessarily get answers to everything, <laughs> so. which we don't we never expect anyway. So, yeah, wow. yeah. After this many years, we've just kind of given up on an- getting answers to everything. Mm-hmm. So, well, can- the doctor has been prone to lying and telling tales. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like even if you do get an explanation, it may not be the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. To paraphrase another <clears throat> Jedi Master, a uh, certain point of view. <laughs> so. Um. What do you guys think of the, well, friends, since they're not necessarily companions? I I like them. them. The fans, the gang, I like them. (laughs) Yeah. Like I was saying last night, Graham kind of reminds me a touch of Rory's dad with a bit of Wolf. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, I like them. Like, they all, like, I, I didn't realize before, I don't know if, like, they told, they said, I just, didn't pay attention, so I was always trying to avoid spoilers. But I like how they're like connected, like 
I don't think they said it. I don't think they said anything. I think that was supposed to be a surprise. Right. And I like how it connects. I mean, yeah. 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 Yaz and Ryan being former schoolmates, Graham being step grandpa. Though Mm -hmm. I wish Grace would have stayed around a little longer. She could have been a she could have been a rotating friend that would come on adventures every so often, but still, you know, hey, yeah, I'm gonna sit this one out. You guys go have fun. I'll catch you next round. Yeah. I was kind of thinking of like Vicky. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, she would have been she would have been a, a nice change of pace. That you know, mm-hmm. if she wasn't a companion, she stayed behind mm-hmm. at home, and Graham and Ryan go off with the as you know, on these adventures with the doctor. I mean, I mean considering what most of the companions have been like in the past. Uh, Rose was a little different because, you mm-hmm. know, Jackie knew where she was. Um, yeah. But, like, mm-hmm. Amy and Rory and Clara and even Bill, you know, go on these adventures with the Doctor and can never tell anybody. I mean, Clara just, like, bold, would have to bold face lie to Danny mm-hmm. to try to explain what the heck is going on. You know, imagine what it'd be like to be a companion who has somebody at home who knows where you are and what you're doing and is encouraging you to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably the only exception to that would be Donna. Yeah, with Wilf. With Wilf. Wilf yeah. like, hey, you go, ignore your mother, you have fun. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would have that would have been pretty awesome to have. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a family member behind is like, you know, what, you know, they come home every now and then like, oh, where did you go to, you know, where have you been? And, mm-hmm. you know, they show pictures and tell all these stories. And she's like, oh, that sounds amazing. You know, mm-hmm. that would have been really, really cool. But, um, you know, as I said last night, it's like it's it's a trope, but it's an easy trope to use. Well, let's. You know, kill off a character, do something to characters so that these characters don't have ties holding them back from going with the doctor mm-hmm. and becoming a companion. Although at this point, they're all off with the doctor accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. And like I was saying last night, too, I kind of like, too, how the doctor kind of pulled each of them, you know, a little bit aside and found out more about them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And liked that they were asking questions. Yes. She'd ask questions. And it's just like when Ryan's just like, yeah, it's my fault. I touched the yellow thing. And she's like, I would have touched it too. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. But then when a couple previous incarnations touch and lick. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. There probably definitely would have been some licking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or at least the specs would have brought out, been brought out. Yeah. Like, oh, what are you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Ooh, I wonder that... if the talk was going to have Brady specs. I mm-hmm. love the Brady specs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh. She's definitely got plenty of pockets now. So. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I, I love how they justified the outfit. She bought it at a charity shop. It's what was available. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. She needed clothes on the cheap. There you go. Yep. <laughs> yep. Do you mind helping me out? <laughs> yeah. Empty pockets. Yeah. As someone who had to get a Halloween costume the same day <laughs> at a, a shop, I can relate. Yes. Mm-hmm. I won a second place in that costume contest too. <laughs> nice. So there you go. Oh, but at least now she's got a pocket for the 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 uh, Sonic Swiss Army knife. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so I, I'm not. Sure, yeah, I, I'm not sure if we needed the full montage of building building the Sonic. It's like, oh, we need to fill in some time. How about a montage? <laughs> Another another trope, but it, it works. So I guess, especially uh, I, I did enjoy it though when she pulled out the spoon and looked at it, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, the spoon. Although I don't think that was the doctor's spoon because I it 
there was like an auto shop or something, but somehow she found like a, a case, like whoever owned the auto shop had like their grandmother's silverware just hanging around. So she was able to get a whole bunch of spoons <laughs> to melt down to become the case of the, of the uh, Sonic. It's like, what kind of establishment is this? But we don't ask questions. The doctor just, uh, you know, makes do with what's available. So, like, um, I, like, if she keeps on this way, like, making stuff, I'm going to call her the McGuire doctor. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> Just give her some string and some chewing gum and uh, she'll save the world. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Oh. But, uh, and again, we get our, 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 our justification for why the Sonic, the new Sonic looks the way it does. She was using what she had available to her. Mm Mm-hmm. So... They, they, it's like they knew people were going to have complaints and they were like, we're ready. <laughs> we're ready for your complaints. <laughs> like, don't like the outfit? Here you go. Don't like the new Sonic? Here you go. <laughs> I mean, probably people probably still complain. I haven't looked for it because I don't need that. Yeah. But... Just Nobody needs happy. that kind of negativity in your life. Exactly. I agree. But, uh... Yeah. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh. So, Can't wait to... See... But we have installed the next, next week's mm-hmm. head. Yes. Yeah. Oh. And ho- hopefully, you know, that what we've seen so far with Jody's doctor is how she's going to continue. It, and it's not, you know, what we're getting just because she's post regeneration. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the very inquisitive, asking mm-hmm. questions, letting her companions ask questions, encouraging them to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that sort of thing. I, I, I love that that's the way that they're going. Mm-hmm. And hopefully they continue to go that way, you know. Because um, that's, that's been my complaint with some of the, especially the classic era companions where they they don't necessarily ask questions they just you know to try and figure things out for themselves all they do is you know what's going on i don't understand Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. yeah it's like use your brain come on Mm -hmm. you're you're very bright and intelligent but not showing it right at this minute yes (laughs) yep and they really didn't bring up too much that she regener- the doctor regenerated into a lady. We just get the one little comment, why are you calling me ma'am? Yeah. Because oh. mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you're a woman? Like, yeah. oh, does okay. it suit me? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, a half hour ago I was a white-haired Scotsman. Yeah, <laughs> or however long ago. <laughs> yeah, it's like 30 minutes ago I was a white-haired Scotsman. <laughs> I was like, oh, Capaldi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I like Jody so far. I still, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still going to be missing Peter for yeah a while. And so. it didn't seem like she was trying to imitate any certain incarnations of the Doctor. It was just kind no. Of, she was she doing is. her own thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was doing her own thing, which was good to see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if it, I hope that they continue with the, you know, we're not going to beat you over the head. Look, the doctor's a woman. You know, mm-hmm, bring it up mm-hmm. if it's appropriate to the story. Otherwise, it could have easily been another man. And right. that it still would have worked. Yeah. 
And I'm thinking, too, with the way the doctor's treating her friends, just from the preview clips where we get from one of the episodes, where one of the guys is asking Graham and Ryan and Yaz, you know, what makes her give the orders? Is it like, because we say so? Yeah. That really says a lot right there. If they're saying that, there's enough. She's treating them as equals. It's just like, hey, mm-hmm. she's got our back. We've got hers. Better watch out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, can- I, 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 I totally expect, I, even before, you know, we got like a trailer or whatever, it had that little clip in there where the guy's are like, well, why is she in charge? And they're like, and they're like, because, because she is. It's like, mm-hmm. like, yeah, once we found out the doctor is going to be a woman, I'm like, I fully su- suspect a, a, some sort of incident in some episode somewhere where because she's a woman, somebody's going to not realize that she is the leader of the group and the mm-hmm. smartest person in the room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, somebody's going to, you know, think lesser of her just because she's a woman and it's like eh, that's not gonna work out well for you <laughs> no nope. it's, it's not gonna end well <laughs> like that would be rude mm-hmm. <laughs> yes so it's like we'll set you straight though mm-hmm. <laughs> so but yeah it's like oh yeah you know, just just let her go just let her go mm-hmm. and be the doctor and the fact that she's female, that just, you know, uh, it's new cosplay opportunities is what right. it is. So. J- j- just one <laughs> little itty bitty tiny part of a great big whole piece. Yeah. That's a small little detail. Mm-hmm. Don't need mm-hmm. to be too concerned about it. Mm-hmm. So... Like, even if I do want to cosplay her, though, I'm still going to have to wear a wig. So, mm-hmm. woman, woman or not. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Well, and kudos to Mattel. I just saw that they are making a Barbie. Yes. Yes. First, of her. First time the doctor has ever been a Barbie. Mm-hmm. And I, I've i seen that picture. And, like, good likeness. Very yes. good likeness. Like, and, and there's a, you know, a little mini Sonic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I I've seen some posts up with the. Does it come with TARDIS? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool! Like if if the case, mm-hmm. if the, the box that she comes in was looked like the TARDIS. Oh, that'd be so cool. cool. That would be cool. Instead of Barbie's dream house, it's Barbie's dream TARDIS. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I like Thank you. Thank you, Mattel. (laughs) First time in a long time I've been excited over a Barbie doll. (laughs) That was something I'm big into Barbies when I was a kid. Like, Mm -hmm. I like, like, the, like, like, in this case, like, I like the special ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I have I have a just a couple of Barbies, uh, and they're all um, like special edition ones like that. So, mm-hmm. so, like if this sells well, then how about Ken as the male incarnations of the Doctor? <laughs> there we go. Mm-hmm. And then we could get instead, you know, instead of uh, uh, Barbie's Corvette, we could get Bessie. Mm-hmm. <gasps> yes. Nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, Mattel, you can have all these di- ideas for free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just send just, us, just, just send us product. Mm-hmm. <laughs> give us a little love that way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like we'll gladly let you have these ideas on the house. Mm-hmm. If you want our mailing address. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> We can provide you with four. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we would gladly. Mm-hmm. Send them your way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, what did we think of kind of the B plots with Tim Shaw? Eh, I mean, 
alien hunting down people as a as a trophy. I mean, that's that's pretty common fare, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and then to come to find out that he's cheating. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, like I have to find the the designated, you know, trophy to prove I'm the worthiest. Uh, you're cheating mm-hmm. in more ways than one. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and, and when the you're disqualified. Kicker, yeah, and wouldn't it be a kicker if we find out that Tim Shaw is the, the son of the highest of high of his race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. So at the at the end, um, when the the crane operator guy kicks him, mm-hmm. but, but Tim Shaw Tim Shaw puts the, the thing on him, on him and disappears. So did he, did he die or did he go home? I assumed that he went home. I'm assuming he went home and then he also kicked the bucket just because those DNA bombs. I think the doctor said something that with whatever tech she had, she was able to remove the DNA bombs into that thing. And then when she gave it to him to click, you know, clicked it, it transferred to him. Mm Mm-hmm. Just from the panic look on Tim Shaw's face. <laughs> but then again, Doctor has been known to lie, so. Yeah. Who knows? But she just made that comment, like, you had no right to do that. Like, what mm-hmm. did he do? Right. Well, maybe the, the no, maybe in her way, maybe the no right of taking care of Tim Shaw when. She was the one there to write the <laughs> write the wrong a la Time Lord Victorious. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. But, and that, then of course that was a little confusing. Nice, yeah. And then of course we get the nice comment when she's trying to jump away across. Yeah. I used to have longer legs. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. I mean we're hoping it pretty well across the yeah. Across the cream ledge, but yeah. Yeah. so just when the doctor regenerates, do the clothes automatically change to fit the doctor's new body? Because I mean, shouldn't shouldn't like the the arms for the 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 jacket be like hanging down past her fingers? Shouldn't the pant legs be like really bunched up? Shouldn't the shoes be too big? Right. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, I honestly never thought about that. Like, Unless there's some Time Lord tech within said clothes. Well, that's a possibility. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. No. <laughs> if we can have pockets that are bigger on the inside, why not? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. Can we just do, something can, can that we, occurred to me. The whole real stretchy pants? Yeah. <laughs> that whole thing? I don't know. Like I said, I just never thought about that. Like, I feel, and it feels like, no, I think about something I should have thought of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think it's, I get too caught up in the episode that, like, yeah. oh, the doctor says we're wearing the old outfit. Yeah, mm-hmm. like and and, and like, like I like how she looked in in Capaldi's outfit. To be honest, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Or or maybe just the Doctor is a uh, somehow able to regenerate, and every time uh, the the shoe size doesn't change. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> Cause the Doctor's man should have the same size foot, no mm-hmm. matter what. <laughs> Uh, or it only or it knows to only regenerate up to a certain point <laughs> yeah <laughs> having the same foot <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, apparently her nose isn't very reliable <laughs> still not ginger yeah <laughs> or, like, I watched it the first mm-hmm. time and I saw her stick her finger up her nose I'm like what is she doing <laughs> yeah I know mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And I loved, you know, oh, oh yeah, that map did me good. I was like, uh-huh. yeah. Yep. Hey, I have taken a naps on some very comfy couches mm-hmm. in my day. Same. same. So, you know. I, I, I will. That's a very comfy couch. I always end up falling asleep no matter what. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Chauncey's parents have this couch that's like denim, but oh. it is so comfortable. So, <laughs> just like sinking into a big pillow, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> a big denim covered pillow. It's like putting on your favorite pair of jeans. <laughs> They're like broken in perfectly. Oh, mm-hmm. So nice. So like, yeah. Don't wake me up. <laughs> yeah. So ca- couch naps. Mm-hmm. Totally. Doctor and I on the same wavelength. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wake up at your own risk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Uh. Anything else? I'm trying to think. I think we touched basically. Well, just did we mention it? I know we mentioned last night with the way that the doctor was not calling Tim Shaw by his proper name. Oh, yeah. The the respect (laughs) matter. And I'm just, Chrissy had brought that up and it's like that hit the nail. Yeah. Right on (laughs) the head. Yeah. It's like the the doctor will, you know, the doctor's met a lot of people, uh, you know, warriors and royalty and all that. It's like the doctor will show you respect if you mm-hmm. show respect in return. You mm-hmm. come to the doctor's favorite planet to hunt down people as trophies. You ain't going to get that respect. <laughs> yep. No, 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 no. And the doctor's a pretty darn good judge of character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trust me, he's had plenty of experience on his home planet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Oh. I'm happy Doctor Who is back. Oh yes. So. Me too. I was and looking forward to the rest of the ride and yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it shouldn't be uh Shouldn't be too much longer. They'll start uh, filming the uh, Christmas special here soon. Mm -hmm. If they haven't already. Right. Mm. I'm sure they wanted to get the... uh, Yeah, the premiere done and over with. So, Mm -hmm. especially considering Jody was in New York over the weekend. So, for New York Comic Con. So, is the Christmas one part of the season? Or is it extra like they normally do? It'll be like they normally do. Because mm-hmm. if it, it, the number of episodes um, compared yeah, to when the, because I was off by a week. <laughs> I, because I predicted Doctor Who was going to start this coming weekend. Mm-hmm. And it would, t- it would take us up to like, like the week before Christmas. So, you know, assuming that they don't, you know, have any breaks, which I don't think they will. Considering right. the number of episodes, so we'll get like a two week break before the Christmas. So, yeah. So, but they, I think they normally would have been filming the Christmas special at this point, but because of the premiere and the stuff at New York Comic Con. Mm-hmm. So, so they should be getting to. That soon, I would think. Yep, and we got a whole lot of guest stars to look forward to. Yeah. Holy cow, yep. that I, credits with the... I don't know who most of those people are. I'm sorry. Uh, Chris <laughs> Noth. Uh, I do know who Chris <laughs> Noth is. The, the, the only American in the bunch. I watch, I watch Sex in the City. I know who Mr. Big is. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And plus, he played a lawyer, a lawyer in Law and Order. <laughs> See, that's, that's how him. I... Like, I'm, that's how I know him from. Uh, I, I know him from Six Month City. So. Well, I do too. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I and, and I'm actually glad that they showed all those faces with like their names because mm-hmm. when Alan Cumming came up, I yes. would not have recognized him. No. <laughs> At all. It was yeah. like Alan Cumming. I'm like, uh, glad well, I, I was I, labeled. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. I would have. I recognize him. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I know. Yeah, I know who he was, but I did not recognize him in full makeup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, and then there the was hair one and other everything one. besides Chris North and Alan Cummings that I recognized, and it's. <laughs> It's out of my mind right now, but yeah. I didn't recognize anybody else, at least not right off the bat. If I watched mm-hmm. it again, maybe. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Did we know beforehand that the actor who plays Graham was in another Doctor Who related show? Yes. I was just, like, I I remember. I didn't know that. And he was he was in um, Sarah Jane Adventures. Sarah Jane Adventures. Oh, okay. It's been such a long time since I watched Sarah Jane Adventures. <laughs> and he was the Pied Piper in the Day oh. of the Clown. Okay. Like, like I don't know if like I knew that. I was just like, like he looked oddly familiar. So I looked it up. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, if I knew that, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think he kind of looks like um, he, he kind of looks like um, Sean Pertwee to me, actually. Mm-hmm. So. That is, I think, like they could be like cousins or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe we don't know. Yeah, Just connections. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. Well. He was born. His birthday's the day after mine. Hey, cool. cool. Thirty years before I was born, but <laughs> <laughs> you still share a birthday with them, nonetheless. <laughs> kind of. Oh. All right. Anything else? Mm, not that I can think of. Excited. Yeah. Shows back too. on. Yeah. Uh, it's like being reunited with a long lost friend. <laughs> How we've missed you. Don't go away. Yeah. It's like finding a, a favorite t-shirt that you thought had gotten thrown out and you have suddenly mm-hmm. find it tucked all the way in the back in a dresser somewhere and you put it on. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love this. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my. So, yes, we will all be watching as uh, Jody's doctor dives further into her. First season. Oh, excuse mm-hmm. me. Oh. We will be here for the entire ride. So. Yes, we shall. Well, if any of our listeners have uh, comments on the premiere of Doctor Who or anything else we discussed, you can send us feedback. The easiest way to do that is go to our website, which is the 5 fangirls.com. From there, you can find. Uh, links to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of our other social medias. You can send us feedback any of those ways. You can make a comment on YouTube or on the blog itself. Um, you can send us an email, which is fiveishfangirl at gmail.com. Also on said website, you can find links to the Traveling the Vortex book club. So we continue Doctor Who all year round by reading a Doctor Who related book every month and then discussing yep. it on Goodreads. So, and there is a poll for next month's book. Yes. So you can go and make your pick. And yes, the 13th Doctor books will come, become choices eventually. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. They're kind of spacing them apart. And then sometimes they release print and ebook at the same time. And then sometimes there's a lag time. Delay. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just trying to make sure when both options are available. <laughs> yep. So you can also find links to our Patreon. If you would like to support us with your hard-earned money, you can do that by becoming a Patreon supporter. As little as $1 a month gets you uh, warm fuzzies from us. And um, if you give more, you can get more. i really need to remember to update the patreon to post stuff more often but our patreon supporters don't seem to care whether they actually get something or not which 
it's fine. So I'm that I'm that way with the people I support on Patreon. It's like I don't really care about getting anything. I just want to give you my money so that you continue to do what you do. So, mm-hmm. um, and and uh, we are grateful to all of the people who support us on Patreon. Um, if you cannot or don't want to support us on Patreon, then attacked by a drowsy again. I think. Um, Maybe it's a hip nose. Um, <laughs> uh, you can also support us by uh, using our Amazon affiliate link, which is also on our website. That just takes you to uh, Amazon, and then you can make your purchases of anything and everything that Amazon sells. Um, and we just get a small kickback. It doesn't cost you any more. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you could use that. Get that free two-day shipping. Mm-hmm. Um and it doesn't have to be anything Doctor Who related or even fandom related. We get we've gotten uh, money back from when Chauncey's bought car parts. So <laughs> thank you, honey. Uh, so yeah, as long as it's sold on Amazon and you click on that link first and then do your purchases, what Amazon is like here. Here's five cents because mm. somebody bought some socks. We're like thank you. Uh, so. Uh, that's uh, pretty easy to do as well. Mm. So, and of course, any money that uh, we make either from Patreon or Amazon goes right back into this show. Mm-hmm. So. All right. So, cross your fingers that the audio on this sounds good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we did a small test recording before doing this. And it sounded okay. So mm-hmm. <laughs> if you're hearing this, then all all all's good. So mm-hmm. <laughs> and we really appreciate our listeners for uh, mm-hmm. sticking sticking with us when we have technical issues. Yes. Uh, we, mm-hmm. we we've been very 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 fortunate that we got as far as we did before we had any issues, and mm-hmm. uh, hopefully going forward. Uh, this this new uh, setup won't work. Like I said, until Microsoft pushes through another update for Skype. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my! So cross your fingers that there are no more Skype updates for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So with that, we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany and Bethlehem saying goodnight. This is Ty from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm hungry. I could go for an egg sandwich. Really craving an egg sandwich. to the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the fiveishfangirls.com. Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review on iTunes. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveishfangirlspodcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash fiveishfangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveishfangirls. Thank you so much for listening, and may the squee be with you.